in the typical inventory cycle with its sawtooth pattern, if our purchasing pattern calls for an order quantity Q, our average cycle inventory will be Q divided by 2. The larger the quantity Q, the longer our inventory cycle will be, and the less frequent our orders will be. With less frequent order placement, our ordering costs can be amortized over a larger quantity. On the other hand, the larger the quantity Q, the larger the inventory we will need to carry. The larger our inventory, the greater will be the costs associated with holding that inventory. Given this trade-off, we don't want our order quantity to be too large for fear of high inventory holding costs. At the same time, we don't want our order quantity to be too small either for fear of frequent order placement and high ordering costs. What is the optimum order quantity? We call this optimum quantity as the economic order quantity, EOQ. To figure out the EOQ, let us put down the two competing types of cost. As we increase the order quantity, the average inventory increases proportionately, so our inventory holding costs increase in a linear fashion. On the other hand, with less frequent order placement, our ordering costs can be spread over a larger quantity. With fewer orders, our ordering costs decrease. Adding both these costs, our total costs start out high, reduce as we increase the order quantity up to a point, and then begin to climb again. The order quantity at which the total cost curve reaches its minimum value is the EOQ. If we set our purchasing quantity equal to this EOQ, we will have found the correct balance between the two competing costs. Instead of purchasing something in a certain quantity, what if we are setting up a process to produce something? What should the size of our production batch be? To answer that question, we use the same principle. But instead of ordering costs, we substitute setup costs. The EOQ can be calculated using the formula shown. As we can see here, the EOQ is proportional to the square root of the annual demand for the particular item. Therefore, a larger order size is suitable for large volume items. Consequently, our inventories will be larger for such items. The EOQ is also proportional to the square root of the ordering cost if we are purchasing the item or setup cost if we are producing the item. Therefore, the larger our ordering or setup costs are, the larger our batch sizes will need to be. Consequently, our inventories will be larger. Finally, the EOQ is inversely proportional to the square root of the inventory holding cost. Therefore, the larger our holding cost, the smaller our batch sizes will need to be. Consequently, our inventories will be smaller. The EOQ mathematical model is based on several assumptions, including a steady demand, unlimited purchasing or production quantities, etc. Many of these assumptions are likely to be invalidated in a real-life situation. However, the EOQ model is pretty robust in that regard. Even if our assumptions are invalidated, and the quantity indicated by the EOQ model is not really the optimal quantity, we are still OK. Given that the bottom portion of the total cost curve is somewhat flat, even a wide range of incorrect EOQ values will result in a pretty low total cost.